Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending our talk, DRA in Qbert. I'm Varun Sekar, joined by Alek Patel. Uh, we are both senior software engineers at NVIDIA, uh, working for the GeForce Now cloud infrastructure team. So today, we are going to talk about how uh, we at GeForce Now Cloud have been using Qbert along with device plugins to run uh, GPU-powered virtual machines. So we will discuss some of the limitations we have seen with the DP framework. Uh, we'll give a brief intro to DRA, uh, dynamic resource allocation, and how it solves the problems that we have faced with uh, DPs. And finally, uh, we'll talk about how Qbert can benefit from moving to DRA and some technical details of how it can be achieved. This talk is a proposal on how Qbert can consume DRA and how we envision it downstream on our GeForce Now Cloud. So keep in mind that uh, DRA is still an alpha feature as of Kubernetes 130, and it's expected to move to beta in 132. So there's a lot of churn in DRA uh, that's still happening. And uh, when we do an early adoption, we do plan to keep that in mind. So with that introduction, let's still go into the topic. Uh, so at, at GeForce Now Cloud, we have two primary use cases for uh, running VMs in our cluster. Like the first one is to like run a VM with a full GPU. So the VM gets uh, direct access to the GPU while it's bound to the VFIO driver. Uh, this gives us maximum performance uh, for our virtual machine. And then our second use case is to be able to create VMs with virtual GPUs. So uh, virtual GPUs allow uh, multiple VMs to have simultaneous direct access to the physical GPU. So this allows us to run more VMs on a node uh, with just one or two GPUs um, at the same time. So for each virtual GPU, we create what's called a mediated device that is passed to the guest through the report domain. So the guest kernel treats these devices as if it has a direct access to a physical GPU. Um, and so yeah, it thinks it's working with the whole GPU while uh, we carve it out into virtual GPUs. Now there are different uh, vGPU classes that uh, GPU can be sliced into. So popularly, we use what's called the two to one and the four to one vGPU classes, uh, which are GPU sliced into two and four virtual GPUs, respectively. So uh, we achieve these use cases using the DP framework uh, in Kubernetes. So uh, for each GPU type, uh, that we talked about in our use case, we have created a separate device plugin uh, that uh, so that we advertise one pass-through GPU, uh, two uh, two to one vGPUs, and four four to one vGPUs, and so we have a separate plugin that manages uh, each of these uh, devices individually. So uh, given a VMI spec like the one we have on the left here, uh, we, uh, we pass in a device name, uh, which, is, uh, which is the device that we advertise from our plugin. Uh, so when we have this, uh, word controller will translate this to a pod spec where it puts this device name and account uh, to the resource request in the pod. And um, and then the scheduler will schedule this pod onto a node in the cluster. Um, so the kubelet on the node, when it sees this pod, it will send an allocate request uh, for the GPU device requested uh, to the device plugin, uh, to the corresponding device plugin. Uh, in this case, uh, let's say it's a pass-through GPU. So we'll send it to our pass-through GPU plugin. Uh, and then the plugin is responsible for uh, for 
putting that GPU in the VFIO driver and passing it back to Kubelet uh, to create the pod. Uh, so the pod, once it comes up, sees this GPU uh, through an environment variable, and then it passes it along to the guest VM. Uh, can you go to the next slide? So, uh, so our, so yeah, I talked about how uh, we use DPs to cater to our use cases, but our biggest gripe with uh, with device plugins is that uh, for each GPU type that we want to run VMs with, uh, it needs its own device plugin registered with Kubelet. So it means that uh, for the same physical GPU. Uh, we advertise multiple different sets of devices to the cluster. And um, the problem with all this is that all these different plugins need to coordinate between each other uh, so that during allocation, the physical GPU can be served by only one plugin at a time. So when we have a pass-through GPU allocated, we cannot, uh, we cannot slice it into GP, uh, vGPUs. And uh, no other plugin can work with that phys physical GPU. Now, uh, the next problem we have is that the device plugin framework does not have a deallocate API. So, uh, for reference, I've posted the whole uh, DP spec on the right. Uh, so, I talked about how uh, the plugins need to coordinate with each other during allocation. Uh, so, the same holds for when a VM is destroyed and the GPU needs to be freed up. Uh, so we currently don't have a mechanism to inform the device plugins that the GPU is freed up and that uh, they can now reset their states uh, and all plugins can manage that GPU. Uh, so the next issue we have is that uh, the device plugins, they currently only work at the node level. Uh, it's a, it's a plugin that runs alongside Kubelet. Uh, but currently, there is no cluster level component to manage the state generated by these device plugins. And this can lead to races with uh, other cluster level components, uh, primarily the scheduler. So when a scheduler schedules a pod onto the node, uh, and until the pod goes through Kubelet admission where the requested GPU is allocated and uh, the different plugins update what they advertise. So the scheduler will continue to see stale inventory on the node. And uh, if new pods are created like uh, before, before the state is updated, then uh, yeah, scheduler can make a lot of uninformed decisions, which can lead to unsuccessful uh, pod admissions. So next, th there are a couple of other issues that we have seen. Uh, one is uh, scale is impacted when we operate with this DP framework. Uh, so essentially, the device plugin gets invoked as part of Kubelet's pod admission. Uh, but let's say you have a large node with eight GPUs, and you want to run 16 VMs uh, with the twos to one uh, VGPU class GPUs uh, at the same time, then you need to wait for like all uh, 15 of these VMs to actually have the GPUs allocated before the 16th VM gets its GPU allocated, and then it can go to running. Uh, so this takes up a lot of time uh, as you wait for all 16 of your VMs to start running. So now I want to talk about some of the exciting stuff, uh, which is DRA and how DRA can help help me solve all these problems. So what is DRA? Uh, so it's a new framework for vendors to provide support for uh, node level uh, devices like GPUs or network accelerators. Uh, so this is meant to replace the old and problematic uh, device plugin framework, which cannot support a lot of our modern use cases we have for running GPUs uh, on Kubernetes. 
so uh, DRA driver, uh, it consists of a node level kubelet plugin and a cluster level uh, vendor specific controller. Uh, so in Kubernetes 130, the core Kubernetes comes with a built-in controller that manages vendor DRA resources uh, at cluster level for us. So straight out of the box, Kubernetes can manage uh, the DRA resources at the cluster level. Uh, so what does each of these do? Uh, so the kubelet plugin, it publishes the devices that it's advertising uh, in the form of a resource slice object. Uh, and this object is stored uh, directly on the API server. The API server communicates with uh, kubelet and it it manages this resource slice object. Now, uh, when a user wants to consume a GPU, they create what's called a resource claim. Uh, this is very similar to a PV claim uh, that you have for volumes. And uh, this resource claim, it includes how many devices you want and what capability or configuration your GPU needs to be in. Uh, so the once a resource claims created and a pod is requested to be created, the Kubernetes scheduler can uh, evaluate against the resource slices of all the nodes in the cluster and can make an informed decision on which node to schedule on. Uh, also, before it actually schedules the pod, it will also update the resource slice object uh, for the node it picked with the device that it allocated so that uh, uh, any future scheduling decisions it'll have to make uh, works with this updated object. Uh, next, I want to talk about how DRA solves the issues that I talked about with the device plugin framework. Uh, so DRA drivers, they manage uh, physical GPUs as a whole, uh, and it provides very prescriptive APIs for how your GPU needs to be configured uh, so that this eliminates the need for uh, having multiple plugins coordinating between each other for the same physical GPU. Uh, so the, a single driver will manage your GPU and uh, whatever state you want your GPU to be in is part of your resource claim. Uh, request. Uh, next, uh, to the DRA framework now, it, it has a DLK API, and this API gets invoked whenever a resource claim is deleted. Uh, so when the resource claim goes away, the resource slice object uh, on the API server would be updated, and then the scheduler will now uh, see the new state before it makes uh, new decisions. And yeah, finally, the scheduler, it always re refreshes its model uh, whenever a pod is created or deleted uh, using the allocate or deallocate APIs um, to the central controller. And uh, it uses this to make its decisions. So now uh, my colleague Ale will talk about how Qbert can benefit from DRA and uh, what its integration in Qbert uh, looks like. Uh, take. Introducing uh, concepts behind DRA. For the rest of this presentation, I'm going to be covering how a device managed by DRA plugins can be used within a Kubeword VMI. <clears throat> there are two main pieces of orchestration involved here. First, getting the devices to the word launcher pod and second, passing the devices from Word Launcher to KMU KVM guest process. The first problem will, will be handled by the Kate's DRA plugin. Um, in the upcoming slides, I will be talking about the API changes required to achieve this, how Word Launcher pod gets the device via the Kate's DRA plugin, and finally, we'll be covering a couple of proposed approaches to pass the device from Word Launcher pod to the KMU KVM guest process. Let's quickly look at the API changes needed to make this work. The picture on the left is P 
picture on the left of the screen is a VMI spec with the needed API changes. The first is the red box, uh, which is a field under VMI spec called resource claims. It is a list of resource claims that this VMI is requesting with a name and a source field. The name is just a pointer used to refer the claim later in the spec. The spec, these spec fields will be converted to word launcher pod spec by the word controller when creating the pod. Further along in the blue box is the claim being used by the domain. Oops. There you can see that the claim field with a reference pointer to the resource claim <clears throat> and the name of the device. This field will be used to pass the device from word launcher to the KMO KVM guest process. Again, the red box is used to pass the device to the word launcher pod. The blue box is used to pass the device from word launcher to KMO KVM, KMO KVM guest process. Let's dive um, quickly um, into the first problem, which is how the device gets allocated to the word launcher pod. So first, the word controller creates the pod with a, with a spec as seen in the picture. picture. Notice how this spec um, is directly taken from the VMI spec as is. There is a resource claim list in the pod spec, which refers to the actual resource claim on the left of the screen. This resource claim has the um, description of what GPU is required for the, um, for the VMI. Here are the steps that will be executed by the Kubernetes platform to make these devices available to the pod. As Varun mentioned, as, as soon as the driver starts, it, the driver will register all the available devices in the API. The API used here is the node allocation state object. Notice two things. First, the CRD is owned by the DRA driver. And second, the object is unique for each node, preferably named after the name of the node. After this, once the word launcher pod is created with the resource claim, the scheduler looks for the nodes that can satisfy the claim for the pod and picks a node. Once the scheduler picks a node, the device will be added to the allocated claims field in the node allocation state object. Now the pod is ready to, to land on a node. Once the pod lands on the node, uh, the Kubelet calls node prepare resources gRPC call to make the device finally ready for the pod. This is how the device GPU, for example, can be accessed in the word launcher pod. Underneath the hoods, what happens is that once the driver has performed the necessary operations to prepare the device, the driver generates a, generates a JSON file in the CDI spec form. The picture on the left is an example of the JSON file generated by a driver with CDI spec. CDI stands for Container Device Interface. It is a new standard being developed that describes a mechanism for container runtimes to create containers which are able to interact with third-party devices. It is similar to CNI or CSI for those who are familiar with the CNCF uh, landscape. Once this file is generated, the file has all the necessary information needed by the container runtime to give container access to the uh, device. Briefly glancing at the CDI spec, there are details like vendor name in the kind field, as well as a list of devices. Within, the, within each device, there are fields like name and container edits. The container edit section has a field where driver can specify custom environment variables um, for the container for this device and other things like um, hooks and device loops. For anyone who wants to take a uh, deeper look at the CDI spec, there is a link mentioned here in the slides. But um, at a high level, this is how the uh, device gets injected into the word, word launcher pod. 
Once the device is available to the word launcher pod, how can it be handed off to the KMU KVM guest process? One of the simplest ways to solve this problem is via environment variables. The quickest way for KubeWord to support um, DRA devices is to set to is to have a set of DRA plugins that generates this CDI spec file. On the, this CDI spec files will have the right environment variables for um, KubeWord to generate the correct DOM, and, DOM XML. When container runtime will pass this um, device to the um, compute container of Word Launcher pod, it will populate the environment variables um, that are specified in the CDI spec. The Word Launcher a container can then look at the environment variable based on the claim name mentioned in the spec earlier and find the right environment variable to generate the correct DOM XML as seen in the uh, bottom picture in the black background. While this is a quick and easy way to extend the um, existing support for GPUs in KubeWord to um, DRA devices. A major drawback of this approach is that any new custom third-party devices that need to be adopted in KubeWord will each require a vendor to write specific DRA drivers for Kube. Not just that, there will be uh, there will be entry changes needed to decode those environment variables set by the drivers and come up with the right DOM XML for these. Since the approach for setting the environment variables has uh, extensibility and flexibility is issues, is there a way where the same API can be supported with bet better KubeWord machinery such that new device vendors can easily make their custom devices um, exposed via DRA drivers work with KubeWord VMIs? Assuming that the necessary details needed uh, to pass the devices from Word Launcher to KMU KVM guest process can be put into the API, the node allocation state API, which is owned by the device vendor. Um, KubeWord can then use a sidecar hook to transfer or to translate that uh, node allocation state like object into our DOM XML needed for the uh, domain. For this sidecar approach to work, um, here are the steps that are needed. First, when the VMI is created with the resource claim, what controller creates the pod with the sidecar annotations? As presented earlier, the pods land on the node with the right DRA devices. Once this happens, the word, word handler pod on the node can get the node allocation state like API object that has all the details of the devices just allocated and pass it to the uh, work launcher. This would mean that we have to extend the sync VMI gRPC call to also accept an additional parameter uh, that has the JSON encoding for node allocation state like object. This object then is passed to the sidecar from the word launcher pod um, through the on-defined domain gRPC method. And this method is implemented by the plugin sidecar to generate the right uh, DOM XML. It could be seen on the pictures that the prepared claim section in the node allocation state has a custom PCI address needed for this device um, to generate the right DOM XML that gets passed through Word Handler via Word Launcher to the plugin sidecar, and the plugin sidecar has generated the correct DOM XML for it. With this workflow, one can imagine that adop the adoption of new devices like hardware accelerators or network accelerators will happen out of the tree and the DRA drivers and sidecars can coordinate with each other to pass device metadata. This will mean that we'll have minimum in-tree changes um, and will mean that the 
solution for this particular uh, problem is extensible for uh, new and upcoming um, host devices. It would also mean that the implementation would be uh, a little more involved than the environment variable approach. And we would have to be careful about making sure that the implementation is uh, backward compatible and um, both the environment variable as well as the sidecar approaches work. As Varun mentioned, all of this uh, proposal is keeping the um, BRA implementation with Kubernetes 130 um, in mind. The, the implementation is in alpha stage in 130 and will move to uh, beta and um, GA states in the future releases. So all of the API fields that were um, discussed in the uh, you know, proposed solution can be extended with um, the proposed beta uh, release of DRA. Okay, so with that, this concludes our presentation. Um, we can open it up for Q&A. Uh, there is a question, I'm going to read it out loud. Can DRA expose the device information on the node? In other words, are the device information visible by regular users? Yeah, this is a great question. So <clears throat> the way DRA uh, exposes the information is in uh, two ways. One, the DRA Kubelet plugin will stream the uh, device information to Kubelet through an uh, gRPC API. Uh, and second, the same source of truth will, will be used to update the Kubernetes API, the node allocation state API that um, we discussed um, earlier in the slides. Having that information in the API in the node specific uh, DRA object will mean that the node level devices are available in the API and can be coordinated across different uh, components of a distributed system, avoiding the races um, that were mentioned um, earlier with their device plugins. Uh, okay, another question. Does the second approach mean that the word handler needs more RBAC to access um, node allocation state? Yes, um, that would mean that we would have to have additional RBAC um, in the protected namespace to access the um, allocation node allocation state like, -like object, um, which is um, published by the driver. However, what we thought is that this problem could be solved by role aggregation in the sense that um, whenever we have a new driver um, coming up or, or published or needs to be working with KubeWord, it would have a specific uh, role for its um, driver object that can have aggregated RBAC um, to the word handler uh, service account. This uh, RBAC in the future versions of Kubernetes could be restricted to um, say that, okay, the, the object is for a particular node and only that uh, node can, or only word handler on that node can have access to that particular um, NAS-like object. This machinery um, could be provided by uh, Kubernetes in the future releases. And we tend, we would like to use that to make sure that um, RBAC is re restricted only to one particular word handler and one node. Okay, I realize we are coming up to time. Yeah, that's great stuff. Uh, you've answered the question. You've, uh, you've come in at exactly 7 p.m. Uh, where I am, 5 p.m. UTC, well done. Uh, thank you so much for your talk.